Tuesday Worlds on Zwift. Uh, we're trying some stuff out this week. I'm trying some stuff out with the video, and we're trying out uh, starting at the top of the hill rather than the bottom of the hill at the request of some of the uh, heavier guys in the in the group. And, of course, that was Murphy flying by me at a million miles an hour. So uh, that's the green light. We're off today, and... So we're on a slight downhill, which is a little different. So this is not my day to uh, be the one to take up the reins and uh, rip it from the gun. Got a good, strong group. Uh, a lot of people, including Murphy, who you saw blast past me there. Uh, Murphy's coming off of a virtual, virtual speed week, which if you're a crit racer, you know about speed week, but... Um, it's a series of crits that takes place over a week, obviously, where you pretty much can race every day. And depending on the year, different races are included. But it's normally like uh, Athens Twilight is often on there. I think Winston-Salem's been on there before. It normally kind of goes up or down the East Coast with uh, some short short drives each day, like Georgia to North Carolina, something like that, throughout the week. Um since everything is canceled this year, Murphy decided to do his own speed week on Zwift by racing every day for seven days, which is brutal, but um, obviously still got some, some pep in the legs because he, he kicked it off really strong there, so I'm just trying to make sure I don't get gapped off, checking behind me, and I think that group behind is going to be the Peloton, and then this is sort of going to be the breakaway, so... I gotta, I gotta go forward, not backwards here. Um, if I go back to that group behind, no one back there is making it. Uh, looks like everyone up the road. Yep, there's Zach Rader, and I kind of know he's the last guy who might make it across. So I gotta go across with Zach Rader. Um, and then this group of four is gonna coalesce, and uh, this is kind of the group for the day. So I'm gonna edit this one down a little bit more than I normally do. Also, speaking of trying stuff out, I moved my whole Zwift area around different camera angle. Still working on that, but I think I like this one better. I don't know. Um, yeah, so here we go. This is the breakaway group for the day. We got myself. We got Murphy, who coming off coming off virtual speed week, self-imposed speed week on Zwift. Uh, we got Brad Cox, who's the current... Uh, Alabama road race champion and then we got my teammate Zach who sets this ride up every week that's why he's got that little beacon over his head um, we're doing you know what I forget this I forget what this route is called uh, it's like the jungle loop it's it's pretty punchy and pretty hilly it goes through the um, the area with the dinosaurs I forget what Zwift calls that but it's uh there there are no like gigantic climbs nothing like a volcano climb or bigger than that but there's a lot of these punchy little rollers and uh zach raider's coming out the gate with a pretty hard punch right there seven watts a kilo and uh true true to real life worlds we're we're going hard even even as the breakaway is established we're we're attacking each other uh i'm making it a point to get on brad cox's wheel because he is he's a really good time trialist so i basically know even if zach's kicking real hard to get away brad's gonna be able to pull that back and he's he's not gonna let anything go uh it is hard for me not to get caught out on these downhills though being a lighter rider if i get out of the uh out of the draft especially i think the dirt affects it too the rolling resistance algorithm on Zwift. Uh, it's really hard for me to overcome that. And uh, Brad goes straight over the top there, and I decided to go with him. Just just having a good punchy, punchy ride today. Uh, flip the camera around backwards just to check. And uh, we're going to keep it rolling pretty fast through here. It's kind of up and down, up and down for a while, and we're on this dirt for a while, so the drafting is slightly reduced by the dirt and Murphy told us before this that he's on the gravel bike in game so that's uh that's going to come into play skipping ahead a few k 
we we really sort of got established after those couple attacks and then just started rolling turns um so my keyboard is a little farther away than than i would like i need to that's one of those things i need to work on but texting in the group chat that murphy's got the gravel bike so he has to pull and in the process i'm almost getting myself dropped uh so i need to rework my whole placement of things but it is nice to have uh it's nice to have a keyboard that i can reach and i can actually type in the chat because the discord become becomes basically unusable once we start going hard uh just everybody's fan noise and hard breathing so i normally switch over to music uh before the green light skipping back ahead again to another another hard segment uh so i kind of know from this group um i don't really have any desire to break this group down any further but i don't want to have someone attack over the top of me and get away so I was kind of just trying to set a pace where I thought no one would really want to go over the top, kind of a minimum viable product. And I think somewhere through here, yeah, Zach goes. And then I just kind of settle into about 350 watts. Um, somewhere through here, th so this is where we start losing Murphy as well. Murphy in the interim period there said basically, I'm smoked from seven days of consecutive racing, so I'm going to do an hour hard and then just sort of fade out. So Murphy's fading out. It's just me, Brad, and Zach, which it's an interesting scenario because normally me, me, Brad, and Zach are racing together against other people, but this is sort of a unique uh, scenario where we're going to be riding against each other. So we're I think we're all sort of doing the math in our head of like what's uh, what's our best our best shot here and um we're on this climb that's it's really just a drag it's not super steep like three percent but it goes on for a while so i kind of know something's gonna go and every time we slow down you can see me kicking it up to around 300 or yeah yeah this is the point where i realize that something dangerous is gonna go if i don't start putting down a pace that's hard but comfortable for me um and I think probably like low 300s is uh, going to be fast enough that no one's going to get a huge jump on me, but also um, I'll be within my limits and I, I can hit it hard and sprint if I need to. Um, yeah, flipping around to the back facing camera so I can check in and uh, make sure no one's going hard over the top. And as I do that, Zach sort of made a, a sneaky move there. Just click up a gear, click up a gear. One thing that always is a red flag on Zwift is when you see the red watts per kilo numbers on the right. And uh, so a good way, if you're racing with a bunch of people who know what they're doing and they're watching those numbers, anytime you see red, you'll probably stand up and step on it. So doing what Zach did there and just sort of rolling the power up slowly. That's a really good way to sneak away without sort of raising that alarm sometimes. So good move on Zach's part. I think he may have slightly overcooked himself between that one at the beginning and this one though, but he has sort of shaken the hornet's nest here. So we're all, um, we're all raring to go and Brad rolls over the top pretty hard we just keep him moving. And I think this is where we begin to, to gap Zach off. Yeah, you can see one second going out and it just keeps going from there. Um, I think we kept it pretty fast up the whole whole rest of this climb. And yeah, it's already out to seven seconds. I think, I think Zach put the pedal to the floor that one time. And sometimes you don't know if you got it until you make an attempt like that. And it uh, looked like he maybe made that attempt and then the feedback was was not good so he he dropped back a group yeah he says not feeling great today so his messages pop up in the middle there because he's the ride leader um everybody else's group messages just uh populate over next to that zwifters nearby column in green um we are doing this one 
the new feature where you only show the people that are in your group ride. So everyone in green is in our group ride, and those are the only people we're going to be seeing on course until we go through the finish line. Um, here's a sneaky one. Look, red numbers from, from Brad. He kind of dropped off the back there. So jumping ahead significantly, a few few miles ahead, uh, Brad and I have sort of been just swapping turns, and I think Brad knows that he's got to get away and got to do a time trial effort, so he catches me looking at my phone, and he's gone. So this is... Uh, you know, I've got a lot of devices and a lot of info going on. I've got I've got a tablet with the companion app and then I've got my phone also on my bars and I normally have like the route pulled up on one and the companion app on the other or something like that. And a lot of that information is good to have to know like when climbs are starting or where I'm at or you know what sectors are coming up, all that kind of stuff is helpful and the the companion app having your sp- speed and wattage and basically like a head unit also just being able to drop to use the companion app to uh do your power-ups is pretty helpful um yeah so brad's put in a little dig here and he's just not not giving it back to me he's making me work to uh to get back on the wheel as we go into the little underwater tunnel thing here um but yeah it can be too much on your bars and uh i definitely on this ride was was letting the uh the slight lulls in the action get to me and see i'm looking at something here on my bars and once again brad he doesn't know i'm doing that but he takes that opportunity and on this little three percent kick he goes and uh this one this was almost the move of the day this was uh This was definitely alarm bells for me, full gas. And I keep thinking I've got it back. I keep thinking I'm gonna roll up to him and then he'll just kick again. You can see I'm getting close and then his numbers go red again. I gotta stand up again. Ooh, 600 watts. This This is a really hard effort. And I'm still not closing it down. He's putting down a hard effort too. I know I've got to get there though. It, if Brad gets a solid gap and he can settle into his tempo, he's gone. And once again, I think I'm there. And Brad just keeps the power down, and I have to stand up again. So I'm really, really, really hurting right, right here. Uh, my heart rate doesn't look too high, but I think I've been pretty fatigued recently, and about 180 is the highest I've seen. So this is uh. This is maxing out for sure. I'm going to work on that camera angle to make it where I'm not clipping a little bit when I stand up, but I I think I do like this one better. Um, So back on terms with Brad here, but you'll see that's that's going to become the uh, order of the day there. So skipping ahead to the the next climb, sort of rolling climb. Uh, Zach's talking in the chat about... uh, how he came back there to hang out with everybody, not because he got dropped by us. Just joking around on the group ride. Uh, So we do have a pretty organized group behind us. I mean, we've got a significant gap, but if we were to really and truly sit up, they would probably come back to us. So uh, having seen some of the attacks Brad's been throwing, on the flats. I really want to minimize that on this climb here. So I think after it flattens out and you go through like a hollowed out tree or something up here, um, I tried to settle into a little bit over 300 and I hoped that would be enough that Brad would uh, not come over the top full sprint, but also be low enough that I would still have a little something in the legs if he did go all in. The, the worst thing that could happen to me here is Brad gets a little gap. He comes over the top with a little gap because this is one that goes up and then back down immediately. There's no flat on top for real. So if Brad gets a gap and goes over the top with a gap and goes into a little downhill with a gap and then he settles into his kind of 
time trial pace with me being a lighter rider and someone who's not as good at a time trial effort i would be gone and i would definitely be going back to that group behind uh for sure yeah so you can see we're hitting the downhill so i knew i had to keep it pretty good and hard to uh through these rollers and brad's i thought he might be trying to take advantage there but i actually think he just saw my power go up and he responded but that was good that i kind of kept him on the back foot through there and now that we're on this descent together i feel like i can probably rest a little bit and I might actually be overdoing it. I'm I'm watching my speed and debating if I can get into the super tuck. And we're back onto these. It, see, it never really goes up or down. It just kind of rolls this whole time. So you can't ever get too comfortable. But I know from the USA cycling race, um, I think that's the one where I did this route. I've definitely ridden this one a few times now. So I'm a little bit more familiar with uh, the gradients. So I know we're getting on to sort of this this little drag right here before the next uh before the next climb it's another little three yeah what does that say kom reverse 247 so yeah that those green arrow or green circles on the road denote the start of this next climb and uh looks like it's going to be about two minutes i like when it puts the eta up at the top so you kind of know if I stay on this pace about how long is this effort going to be so with that in mind I settle into about 350 somewhere between 350 and 400 here I'm thinking I can definitely hold that and I think it'll keep uh, Brad from attacking because I know there, there is a really big downhill after this one this is where I got gapped off um, in one of my races so I really want to make sure that I'm on or ahead here, definitely not behind with a gap because getting back on on a downhill is, uh, that's the nightmare scenario for me. So I probably could have settled into a little bit higher power and made him hurt, but I'm actually not trying to get a gap here. I'm just trying to keep him from getting a gap. So. I'm playing defense a little bit and the reason I'm doing that is I, I'm a little bit punchier of a rider than Brad but Brad has much better sustained power than I do and we got several miles left so if I get a gap from him at this point he's definitely going to pull it back and when he does he's going to be in a better place than I am uh aerobically fitness wise whatever he's he's going to be feeling a lot better than me so and he is trying to push the pace here and see if he can get a little gap so i know i kind of got to grit the teeth and get get back on before i've been caught out by this before too that seems like the top but it kind of goes down and back up one more time and then you go through the actual kom arch i'm pretty sure but it's really easy to lose a group through here because you want to you want to sit up and get off the power, but 2% is not really enough to do that. And uh, I want to say it might kick back up one more time. This this could be the descent. Either way, that's 2% at the top is not, uh, not steep enough to really let off. I think Brad maybe even throws... Yeah, he... So he's going to use one of these little kicks here and sort of my false sense of security to attack me and i do the exact wrong thing with my power up i got a feather at the top of the climb which is not super helpful um flipping around to watch brad because i i can kind of sense an attack coming when he's uh hovering off the back like that uh that's a good way to accelerate in the draft to come out with some speed so i kind of knew he was plotting something here yeah we hit that little seven percent he hits his feather i'm late on mine so really that time i took to reach up and hit the feather power up i really should have just started sprinting started sprinting there because now i'm going downhill with the feather which i think is actually probably making me go slower there is a little six percent here but 
this is once again like complete emergency if if i don't get back to brad within a few seconds and he can settle into his time trial pace he's uh he's he's got me and i think he knows that that's why he's trying all these little attacks to see if he can can get a gap and stick the gap um it's uh much much like real worlds there are all these little moments moments of panic and split second decisions and uh you know, really having a ride like this, in, in real life, we call this a race simulation ride. And uh, see here, Brad goes again. This is his, his like last ditch effort to maybe gap me off. We are on the flats here. So I saw that one coming and I'm going to shut it down pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah, riding this ride in real life back when we used to be able to do that, um, sort of how I got better at at bike racing and at tactics because you you learn to make those split second decisions without having to think about it you learn how to do that calculus of like how do i feel how does that person feel uh can they stick this do i need to go with them do we need to bring this back slowly um all those decisions and if i am going to get there do i need to make a quick surge now do i need to get in that you know, lower my head and get arrow and try to bring it back slowly. Like what's the best course of action. All those decisions have to be made really quickly. And, uh, here goes Brad with one last one. See the numbers went red. And before he even got around me, I was on the power. So that's really just knowing Zwift and knowing where to look. I was looking directly at his, his numbers there. So I was able to catch and kill that one pretty quickly. Yeah, making those decisions on the fly, that's such a big part of bike racing. Some of those things, if you, even a few seconds of hesitation can be enough to get you dropped or spend, spend enough energy that you're going to get dropped later. So that's really what we're out here for, especially with, with Tuesday Worlds. Uh, there's no results sheet. Uh, there's no... Uh, no, nothing on the line really so people feel a lot more free to attack with impunity and it's it's good because we can all get a workout in and and sort of learn from some different scenarios try some stuff out and see see what it feels like know how you're going to respond in a race and and learn how to respond in a race um so at this point this is kind of the sit up before the sprint we know we got a pretty healthy gap here and I want to make this as slow of a, I guess as slow of a run in. I do better with a really big acceleration into the sprint rather than sprinting from a high speed and a short sprint. So a lot of Zwift races will go from 0.4 miles, 0.3 miles out. I do best from about 0.2. So I'm going to try and, uh, yep, we're hitting 0.2 hit that drafting boost and uh this is right in my wheelhouse and really good sprint for me to get over a thousand watts for a second there uh only weigh 61 kilos so i kind of wish this was going to be on zwift power because that was a that was a really good effort for me i wonder if that would have been my best 15 second power um normally in the zwift races that it counts with a lot of people it's hard for me to get get my power up that high because we come into the sprints so fast and you, you can never come in rested really um i'm on the companion app here this is something i'm gonna change up for this week i figured out how the fan view works a little bit better so i'm gonna swap back to the second group on the road and uh watch them finish as i cool down here um searching through to find zach raider it makes it a little harder after i'm out of the meetup um on the right there doesn't have everyone who's in the meetup highlighted anymore so i gotta go through and search for names to find people but i have figured out how to do this and it's pretty cool i did uh i did my own workout the other day while i watched the teammates race i just watched them on fan view and watched my power on the companion app so now i'm i'm just cooling down and we're watching zach raider here um in the black and red kit He's the one who uh, who dropped off 
uh, last one that Br Brad and I dropped off and he went back to this group. So it's kind of playing around with the camera angles. I like the idea of watching a sprint from this view like you see on TV. That would be pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, Zach does not leave it to a sprint. Um, he's going to go for kind of a long bomb, which makes sense for Zach. He's he's probably best going from farther out than most people. So the only thing is I can't see their finish line from this view, but I know about where it is. Yeah, Zach's throwing a thousand watts there. Uh, really good sprint to get away from those guys, and then he's going to settle into. Whew, I say settle in. That's that's a tough pace, but he's going to grow that gap, and those guys are going to sit up behind and, and sprint among themselves. So at this point, I pretty much know, okay, that Zach's gone. I don't need to watch Zach anymore, so I'm going to swap back to them and uh, go back to Scott Staubach here and watch him for this final sprint. Um, Scott actually used to live in Birmingham, so it's cool that he, uh, he can do this ride remotely while we're doing this Zwift thing. Uh, he hasn't, I probably haven't ridden with Scott in real life in two or three years, but used to do a lot of cyclocross racing with him. Uh, good bike racer and good sprint right here. Uh, you can't tell exactly where the finish is, but um, Scott gets away pretty clean. I believe their virtual finish line was somewhere right through there where the uh, colored dots were. So that's it for Tuesday Worlds this week.